Part E, question number three. Please give a like and a subscribe. Let's keep the channel growing. Thank you guys very much. So it says Alima owns a small high street store selling clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Alima plans to start using online system to, um, to assist her business. Alima creates an online store. Alima has decided to subscribe to an online service to host the website and data for her online store. Explain what one way subscribing to an online service will impact on Alima's business. So she's going to have low or reduced startup costs as there is no need to buy hardware, software, and employ specialist staff, but offset against subscription charges. So rather than her buying a server, then paying someone to set up the server, then paying someone separate to make the website, then paying someone to maintain the server and the website, she just pays one company, drag and drop, make her website using something like Wix or WordPress, and it's easy for her. That's going to cost her maybe five, ten maybe 20 pounds a month and that's it everything is done i will not have to maintain the site the site is maintained for alima no need to employ trained um, specialist staff leaving alima to get on with running her business saving ongoing costs which will be balanced offset uh, against subscription charges so more or less what i said before she she doesn't have to pay anyone special to do anything she, she can do almost everything herself the site will be maintained to a higher standard than alima could provide using the host's expertise which would promote Alima's business in a good light, leading to increased business, sales, customer interest. So Alima is just a person who sells stuff in a store. Even myself, I know how to make websites, but who's going to be better at making, monitoring, maintaining, updating websites? Me, one single IT person, or an entire company that deals with that stuff. That's their speciality. Who's going to be better at cooking, I don't know, jerk chicken? Me or the chef in the restaurant down the road, right? It's always going to be better to go with someone who specializes. And even though she might be paying a premium, maybe 20, 30 pounds a month, that person knows all about that. So when a new security issue arises even, she doesn't have to concern herself about it. It's all down to them. Lack of control of content or data as our reliant... Oh, where am I? Where am I? Uh... As are reliant on third-party security. However, the third party may be more subject to cyber attacks because of the nature of their business. So... This is a tricky one. It's going to be better for you as a single individual to, to hand over your security maintenance to somebody like Microsoft or Wix or WordPress that deals with really good security rather than you trying to do it yourself and updating stuff and reading and finding stuff out. But on the other hand, who do you think a hacker will try to hack more? Some small company making maybe £50,000 a year, £100,000 a year or microsoft who makes like a million pounds per per hour they're gonna get more stuff when they hack microsoft so it's good that microsoft is managing it but it's also bad because third party will get hacked more than the smaller businesses just because they have more stuff to steal service level agreements and terms and conditions that's something that she would have to look into as well because terms and conditions means that she might be tied in for a month six months three months a year service level agreements what does a company actually agree to do next alima would have to develop company policies for protecting data which may require additional staff training requiring staff overtime or company downtime yes every company or everyone that does work for other people they need to have some form of policies in place for example if i'm making a website for someone i make sure that wherever i store their details their pictures or all of that stuff is saved on a secure google drive folder that's the only way i can get into it is using two-factor authentication which means that when i log in with my email and my password it sends a text message to my phone with a six digit code that i will have to put in before i get in alima is going to do something along those lines for her company it doesn't really matter what it is but just know that she has to have certain policies in place because she's now operating online